This is Dr. John Odette. I will be presenting in this case an IOL exchange of a IOL who has been in the eye for 25 years. This IOL has new onset calcifications and glistening that are affecting the vision. There is a significant amount of cortex remaining on this lens from the original surgery 25 years ago. This is also a post-vitrectomized eye and an open bag. We start the procedure by making an LRI um, to uh, alleviate some of the residual astigmatism, astigmatism that the patient had. The uh, anterior, capsule, or anterior um, portion of the eye is filled with viscoelastic. A Donenfeld LASIK flap elevator is then used to uh, free the anterior capsule from the lens. In this process, you will see that the um, bag lens complex does have significant zonular laxity, uh, especially at this point in the video. You can see the uh, capsule move freely um, due to the loose zonules. Viscoelastic is then attempted to uh, uh, be injected under the anterior capsule and around the lens. However, this was unsuccessful. A Sinsky hook is then used to uh, attempt to rotate the lens. However, uh, due to the residual cortex left from the original surgery, it is firmly adherent and uh, we are unable to complete this maneuver. The Donenfeld uh, LASIK flap elevator is then used to tent up the anterior capsule and uh, we attempt to inject viscoelastic around the lens. In this process, we are able to free up some of the residual cortex where the uh, haptic happens to be fibrosed in. Uh, so at this point in the procedure, we decide to uh, clear some of the residual cortex this is done with uh, both a Sinsky hook, uh, irrigation aspiration, and um, uh, viscodissection of the cortex. Here you see uh, me using the uh, silicone IA tip to uh, clear out some of the cortex. Finally, the decision is made to use a chain cannula to uh, inject viscoelastic around the lens. This works very nicely. I am finally able to get viscoelastic posterior to the lens uh, and around uh, the majority of the lens. In doing so, some uh, additional amount of the cortex is freed up. Uh, at 3 o'clock, you will also see uh, some of the anterior uh, lens epithelial cells that uh, have come free from the anterior capsule. We once again return to using a Sinsky hook. I'm able to go posteriorly. That uh, uh, did not free up the lens, so I decided to try and sweep some of the um, anterior lens epithelial cells with a Singer sweep. This was once again unsuccessful, and we decided to stop due to the zonular laxity. Uh, I go back in with a uh, Sinsky hook and try and uh, free up the remaining cortex at 9 o'clock. Um, I get this out of the eye and uh, reattempt to uh, free the lens. It does not free up, so I, at this point I use uh, an MST microforceps to free up uh, and remove the anterior lens epithelial cells. Some of these cells were uh, very adherent to both the lens and the capsule as you see in the video, but we were able to uh, free them up and remove them nicely, um, which uh, aided us in getting this lens out of the bag. <clears throat> you can see there is zonular laxity, uh, basically 360 degrees uh, with this lens. Uh, at this point I'm using a MST micro scissors to uh, cut the last portion of the uh, lens epithelial cells. Once again we are back in the eye with a chain cannula on our uh, viscoelastic, which is injected around the lens. You can see I'm now able to move the lens uh, without moving the bag significantly. Uh, there are more, uh, there is more residual cortex as you can see from about one o'clock to about six o'clock in the video. 
but using the chain cannula we are finally able to free up the entire optic of the lens. The haptics um, remained relatively uh, socked in. At this point I used the MST micro scissors and micro forceps to uh, cut the haptic uh, at 12 o'clock. The haptic at 6 o'clock is uh, not yet cut but that will be the next step. Uh, I try to just spin the lens out of the bag but the remaining cortex uh, pr uh, proves this to be too difficult. So the uh, trailing haptic is also uh, severed. Uh, at this point I use a Pac-Man type technique to uh, remove the lens from the eye using once again <clears throat> MST micro forceps and um, lens cutters. You can see the lens has now been removed um, and uh, the remaining haptics are still present. We try to remove the, the haptic, however some of the bag starts um, coming with it, so we decide to just trim this haptic and uh, allow the, the remaining probably two millimeters of haptic to stay in the bag. Uh, at this point I try to remove the uh, residual cortex with the MST forceps but that was unsuccessful. I once again go in and visco dissect out this cortex um, from the uh, fornix of the capsule. Uh, eye is used to clear this remaining cortex from the eye. <clears throat> Once again, this is a, an open capsule in a post-vitrectomized eye, so thankfully I did not need to perform a vitrectomy. However, uh, we did have concern the entire case that either the lens or the cortex could fall posteriorly. Uh, I, uh, at this point, used the Singer Sweep to uh, clean up a little bit of the um, uh, remaining lens epithelial cells on the posterior capsule. However, not too much time was spent doing this as the capsule was still fragile at this point. Uh, I'm using a um, Bausch & Loam LI61AO lens. It is a three-piece lens. I made the decision to put the lens in the sulcus at this point uh, because of the zonular laxity. We uh, did perform um, reverse optic capture I'm sorry, optic capture uh, with the lens captured in the uh, anterior um, uh, capsulorexis that was made from the initial cataract surgery. At this point, I'm just using uh, an uh, iris manipulator to ensure that the lens is in fact uh, properly seated in the sulcus and there is no remaining um, haptic or cortex uh, around. This was completed successfully and the patient did very well. Thank you.